A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Lord, great and awesome God, you who keep your merciful covenant toward those who love you and observe your commandments. We have sinned, been wicked, and done evil. We have rebelled and departed from your commandments and your laws. We have not obeyed your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Justice, O Lord, is on your side. We are shamefaced even to this day. We, the men of Judah, the residents of Jerusalem, and all Israel near and far, in, in all the countries to which you have scattered them because of their treachery toward you. O Lord, we are shamefaced like our kings, our princes, and our fathers for having sinned against you. But yours, O Lord our God, are compassion and forgiveness. Yet we rebelled against you and paid no heed to your command, O Lord our God to live by the law you gave us through your servants, the prophets. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. Lord, Lord, do not deal with us sins. Let the prisoners sighing come before you. With your great power, free those doomed to death. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations, we will declare your praise. Dominus Fabiscum. Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. <coughs> Jesus, <coughs> Jesus said to his disciples, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure packed together, shaken down and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. Verbum <coughs> Dahomini. Today, in the readings, we have powerful readings about personal and corporate as the people of God, contrition, sorrow uh, for sins, and also the mercy we are to have towards others in the gospel. <clears throat> the first reading from the prophet Daniel, he was part of the people of Israel taken into the Babylonian captivity in the sixth century 
he was 10 years old, and taken off into captivity for seven years, 70 years. And then they would return through Cyrus, Cyrus the Persian king, who would liberate them. He would have to come back and rebuild the temple and rebuild their city, Jerusalem. And it was due to their sin. And that's what Daniel is saying here. It's this beautiful prayer of contrition and repentance. He said, we have sinned, rebelled, departed from your commandments, not obeyed the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers. And he repeats that phrase, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers. Very much has this corporate sense that it's, we have sinned. Daniel is a holy man. He's a prophet. You know, he stood up against uh, you know, the wickedness in Babylon. And he says that we've sinned, we've rebelled, we've not obeyed. You know, we are shamefaced. You know, we, uh, for we, you know, for having sinned against you, we rebelled against you. He goes on to say, justice, O Lord, is on your side. Justice. I remember one time I was in a foreign country and walking through a, a spice market and they had these scales. You know, they're always like weighing how much grain or spice they're going to give out. And it was kind of striking to see the physical scale, you know, <laughs> up there. And I think of justice, you know, and that if we honestly look at our lives, you know, have I cooperated with grace? Have I given in to the world, the flesh, and the devil? You know, we are all sinners. We have to, to recognize that. We are shamefaced for having sinned against you. But the line of hope is, he says, but yours, O Lord, our God, are compassion and forgiveness. That's what he sees in God, he recognizes in God, that we are to trust in his mercy. The responsorial psalm, remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. So those are the qualities we see in this prayer of contrition, humility, that we're brought low, we recognize, recognize our, our sinfulness, our weakness, our having failed, and also this corporate sense that we are united, we would say today, the, as the people of God in contrition. It's not they are the problem. That's a, a tendency in us. We feel better about ourselves if they are the problem. Chesterton famously said, I think it was some kind of newspaper article that solicited responses, what's wrong with the world? You know, he wrote in, you know, I'm, I'm what's wrong with the world. He recognized his personal sin, that sin is the problem. We all have it. We're united in that in a certain sense, fellow sinners, brothers and sisters, that we have all sinned. And we can't simply point to them as the problem because I have my own stuff. I need to be forgiven. You know, Jesus created quite a stir in his table fellowship with the public sinners. You know, people that were coming to him and turning to him, he had table fellowship with them. The scribes and Pharisees were outraged at this. But this was a powerful sign. The Catechism talks about of God's forgiveness towards the public center, and this returning to the people of God, this incorporation back into the body of Christ, because sin will separate, you know, serious sin separates us from God and, and also from his mystical body, you know, if it's serious enough that we are separated from that. And there's this, this ecclesial dimension to the sacrament of confession, that we are reintegrated, we're brought back into the body of Christ and Jesus Christ, you know, united together in him. But we see this witness of contrition predominantly in, in Daniel's prayer, this sorrow the catechism defines and Trent defines, the, the sorrow of the soul and detestation for the sin committed together with the resolution not to sin again. Sorrow and detestation and resolution. You know, technically, when we make our act of contrition and confession, there should be some line about 
this resolution, not to sin again, this purpose of amendment. The church speaks of imperfect contrition. We consider, might be due to consideration of sin's ugliness, or the fear of damnation, or some other consequence. And that's enough. That's enough to go to confession in fear of loss of our salvation. And there's also perfect contrition. This, uh, it arises from our love for God above all other things, you know, that we are sorry for having offended him. And this, of course, would remit venial sin, lesser sin, and even if it's perfect contrition and mortal sin accompanied by the resolution to go to sacramental confession, we still need to confess our sins. St. Thomas Aquinas would teach that, that the grace of the sacrament is to bring that imperfect contrition to perfect contrition, that grace, because that's the only way sin is forgiven by God. <clears throat> In the gospel today, we see that this great mercy that we've all been shown when we repent of our sin, that we are to give it to others, that same measure. Again, if you go to the spice market, right, they're shaking stuff down and measuring it out. It, it packs it down, right? When you shake, shake the measure, pack together, shake it down, overflowing, pour it into your lap. We've been given this great concentrated gift of God's mercy, solidly forgiven our sins. So we are to give that to others. So stop judging, stop condemning, forgive and you'll be forgiven. You won't be condemned. You won't be judged. You know, the human heart, Scripture tells us, who can understand it? <clears throat> In no way can we judge someone's heart, their motivations, how they see things, what they've been through, mental issues, hang-ups, family of origin issues. <laughs> Modernity has unpacked a lot of complexity for why we do what we do but they can't figure it out, we can't solve the problem you know, from the outside or, or judge it. <clears throat> but it helps us, you know, I think we can see the complexity of why people do what they do. And we have trouble figuring ourselves out at times. Why do I keep doing that? Why do I keep falling into these patterns of behavior? So I can't judge another person's motives. I can say what he's doing is wrong. Some things are intrinsically evil. I can say that. <clears throat> but as I have received mercy, I need to show that to others, and I'll be given mercy. That is so true. I've experienced that in my life. You know, when we forgive somebody, you know, we experience a forgiveness ourselves. We experience uh, a mercy ourselves, a, a communion with God ourselves. Again, modern culture would say, drop the rock. You know, you're holding on to this lack of forgiveness, this resentment, and it's dragging you down. <clears throat> One time I was out hiking, and uh, we, was, we used to go in the summers, we'd, someone let us use their cabin in the Appalachian Mountains, and beautiful mountain lakes and everything, and I was a good swimmer, and I was just trying to do a He-Man thing and swim across this lake with this rock. And I remember just fighting it, you know, and just that feeling of letting it go, you know, and just floating to the top. That's what we are called to do in giving this forgiveness to others, to let it go, to cancel the debt. You know, Luke's Gospel emphasizes, you know, to pray for our enemies. If you want to be free of that resentment, you want to drop that rock, pray for others, pray for those you have trouble forgiving and resenting. The Catechism says that we can't simply do this, you know, we can't imitate from the outside. It must be a, a vital participation coming from the depths of the heart and the holiness and the mercy and love of our God. Because we've received it, because he has first loved us, we can give that to others, a vital participation. You know, if we can't find that in ourselves to give mercy, to give forgiveness, turn to the Lord. 
We need a vital participation with him. We need to share in his holiness. I need his love poured into my heart to be merciful to others. Beautiful thing as a priest, you know, we, we see people come to us and tell us their stories and the confessional work, and I've just seen such beautiful examples of forgiveness, of real hurt that's let go of, and they move on. They move on. Because they've first been loved by God, they experience that, and they naturally, in a sense, give it to others. And that's true liberation. 